Welcome to your Tuesday review brought to us by our friends at Kaiser Permanente. Kaiser Permanente for all that is you. It is Maddie. It is me. 2-1 win for Atlanta United 2 here at Wicks Family Field in Joe Davis Stadium. Have to say the full name at least once off the top. And then after, after afterwards, we can just do one or the other. But uh, Maddie, big win for Atlanta United 2. And we start off, really, you look at the starting eleven for Atlanta United 2 coming into this one. This one was all kinds of serious. Oh, absolutely. You had Luke Brennan, Tyler Wolf, Nick Firmino, Efrain Morales. I mean, you had the big one, big guns. You also had Matt Edwards as well checking in. And it's great, you know, them coming down, getting some minutes with the twos. And after a dominating performance like that, it's important, very important. Getting to see uh, Rodrigo Neri continuing his. We'll get into the uh, the show in and of itself. You'll hear from Steve Cook. You'll hear your highlights. We catch up with Rodrigo Neri and Caden Moore and go over the win here for Atlanta United 2, getting full points on the day. So stats after the end of the 90 minutes, XG, 1.89 to 1.42 for Atlanta United 2. 15 shots to 11, 7 on target to 3. Shots inside the 18, 9 to 6. Total big chances, 2 to 1. Touches in the opposition, 18, 20 to 19. Final third entries, 52 to 40. Possession, 61, 39. And getting into the defensive actions, 19 tackles on the day for Huntsville City. They won 12 of those. Atlanta United, 2 wins, 8 of 11. Six interceptions on each side. 26 fouls called in the match, 16 of them against Atlanta United 2. Three yellow cards for Atlanta United 2 on the day, and, and Tyler Wolf gets a yellow card in the 16th minute and played with it through the remainder of the first half and into the second half. So good to see Tyler Wolf out there for some substantive minutes. I thought he looked really, really, really good in this game. He had It took him a little bit longer to get started into the match, but then once he did, he was on fire. Him just connecting passes, able to find Nary, creating that full sequence and that's what you want to see you want to see Tyler get more minutes on the pitch because he hasn't been playing as much and him getting as many minutes as he can and if that's him coming down playing with the twos a lot more I'd love to see it because he had a great performance tonight and it's going to get him some reps on the field 2-1 win for Atlanta United 2 and here's our conversation with Atlanta United 2 head coach Steve Cook after the match on the field here in Huntsville perfect all right Steve first of all what a performance tonight on the road here in Huntsville once again. What did you see from the side? What did you see from the guys? Yeah, good performance. Um, it's funny, we always seem to play well here. I don't know why, but we always, we've always we always played really well here. Not just in terms of getting a result, but uh, we've played well. Um, and I thought tonight, in in periods of the game with the ball, it, we were excellent. And and we couldn't quite get that finishing touch in the first half. I think if we'd have, if we'd have really executed in the first half, I think we could have ran away with it. But... Obviously, at half time, we, we had a couple of conversations that we thought were playing well, but just felt that we had to get the ball wide and, and, and really play forwards a bit quicker and, and get forwards in momentum, get in the box a little bit better, uh, play Rodrigo a little bit higher because he was dropping too deep. So, the credit to the players, they, they made those little changes. It wasn't a lot to change, but they made those changes. And, uh, you know, it's a well-deserved victory for them, you know, as players, because I think sometimes in a course of the season, you know, you can feel a bit despondent at times. And I think for them tonight, it's a really good pick-me-up. You, you mentioned, like, you guys performing very, very well here. One thing that Hobby said when I talked to him earlier in the week was they love getting to come into an atmosphere like yeah, this, getting yeah. to play in front of this crowd. Mm. What was it like kind of hearing all that noise, hearing some of the things, you know, the boos, the cheers, everything like that? How does that kind of really energize no, the guys? No, it's perfect, and uh, you want that. You know, I think I think one of the things the league has got to look at is how do we get more people watching games in stadiums that are meaningful, and uh, these young players, you know, you can't go in front, you know, play in front of 25 and then next week play in front of 25,000, 75,000. It doesn't doesn't quite prepare you. So I think that's something that, that needs, to, needs to shift. And, and I think here in Huntsville, credit to them, they, they always get a good crowd. There's several thousand here tonight, a good energy crowd. They, they, they cheer their team on, they have a go at us. And I think that's how it should be, you know. So for me, uh, this is in this league, easily the best I've been in. So credit to Huntsville for that. You mentioned Rodrigo Neri having that brace, having getting his first professional goal with you guys, mm. and then getting the brace. How has he been meshing with the team and seeing a performance like that from him tonight? Yeah, he's been good. And and like I said to you before, he's, he's 
a good player, good technique. He uh, has a good understanding of the game, but we want to see him in the box more. We don't want to see him come back 50 yards and get the ball and pick it up from the centre-backs. We want to see him make runs in behind, get into the penalty area unmarked. When people are whipping balls into the box, he should be the first guy in the box. So these are things I think that he's got to learn, uh, especially in MLS. Uh, he's going to have to pay special attention to that, not waste energy running backwards, but uh, spend more of his real forward running and, and fast running for going forwards and not coming back and chasing back. And I think he deserves his goals. He's done really well. Both goals taken brilliantly. As I've said to you before, in the box, he is ex exceptionally good. Uh, his technique is fantastic. He's very calm when he gets in the box. But if you only get in there four times a game, then you might not score too many in your career. And especially as the levels go higher, uh, you know, in MLS tonight, he might only have two chances and they might, they might go missing. So I think that's something he's got to really look at. And uh, we'll keep helping him with, him with it because he's a young player and he's still, um, you know, adjusting to living in America again. So I think he's, he's got a bright future. So second half, after they get their goal, and I know you were trying to bring them in before, but you bring on Cooper Sanchez, you bring on Aiden Torres, finish the match, 2-1 yeah. lead to see it out with four 16-year-olds. What does that say about your belief, yeah. your coaching staff's belief, but also the club's belief in the kids? Yeah, it's funny. We, we got them in there. with um, we, we stood them up to come on at like 62 minutes, and there was like a 10-minute crazy period where the ball never left our penalty area. I think they had like six or seven set pieces in a few minutes and then the penalty and we, we threw them on. They both, they both did really, really well, Cooper and Aiden Torres when they went on. But I think Dominic chong Wee, the pass he made down the line for the first goal, the way him and Caden Moore connected in, during the game was excellent. And yeah, the, the future's bright, you know, in that regard. And, and you forget as well that now because there's some 16-year-olds, you forget that Jaden Hibbert's behind him and he's only 19, you know. So it's quite a young group and, uh, you know, F is 20 and Matt Edwards is 21. So they they're almost looking after these young players and they're young players themselves so i think credit to everybody tonight and and yeah the young ones they deserve a special mention but i think when you look at javi armas and noble akello nick Firmino in front of that and the way they went about their business in midfield tonight i thought they were excellent as well i want to ask you too about tyler wolf kind of a first time we've seen him for an extended period yeah. of time in a while how did you feel like you did yeah he's not played enough minutes in the club this year that's a, the truth and um he needs to play much more, as do all players. You know, you can't you can't just be a training guy. Uh, you've got to play to fully reach your potential. And I think Tyler tonight was excellent. You know, we obviously we left him on a bit longer than we, we wanted to because we wanted to get him off at 60, 62 minutes. Uh, and, and we had to keep him on because of that situation. But I thought Wolfie was class. He was unfortunate not to get a goal, I think. He was really, really bright in and around the penalty area. Uh, and as always, he's class in the final eight areas. So I think I think Wolfie hopefully can get more minutes now, whether it's with the first team or with ourselves, and and really kick on now in his career because he's at that point where he needs to kick on. And at the same time, we talk about finishing out matches. Mm -hmm. We talk about the four 16-year-olds. Two of those 16-year-olds play the full 90 minutes. Yeah. And then it's another lesson for the younger players yeah. about seeing a match out, mm -hmm. A, and then seeing a match out with chaos, yeah. B. Important lessons tonight. Yeah, I think so. And, and you're right, is that they're in that situation that probably in academy football, they never really get in to see that because it's, it's, it's more under, under their control. And also with the crowd as well, and they're coming forward, they're putting subs on that were making a real big influence going forwards and, and some really, really athletic players coming on. And I think they handled it exceptionally well. And the, the more they are in the game in those kinds of minutes and they play well enough to stay in the game, I think it's bodes well for their future. And again, I think I think they were all really good tonight. And, and again, I think, uh, again, you, you can highlight one or two and things like that. But I felt tonight was probably with the ball as good as we always seem to be. But without the ball, we seem to have a lot more stability to it tonight. And we had a lot more organisation. And I think uh, the players wanted to win tonight. And, and that, for me, goes... Uh, long long way i know they always want to win but you've got to do sometimes the dirty work that is required to win games and i think tonight we did some of that dirty work and some of the basics of the game that we think are easy but they're not uh, and i think credit to them all because they did that they did that work tonight so well done i really liked hearing from head coach steve cook after that matchup 
it's one thing that we all kind of talked about off air between all of us is just having four 16 year olds to close mm-hmm. out a match like that. That's awesome. It, it, it's great lessons for them learning to close it out. Two of the 16 year olds, by the way, played the full 90 minutes, 90 minutes plus the seven minutes of chaos that we saw. I mean, they played so well, and it's, that's what the proven grounds for. It's what the twos are for. And it's everything that you need. It's just, it's so much fun to watch. Sorry, Sophia Cupertino is showing us the the, uh, the, the <laughs> photos that she took on the field, and they are stellar as always. And you'll see those on the SDH social media. Uh, Dominic Chonqui played the full 90. Caden Moore played the full 90. And uh, you finish up with Cooper Sanchez and Aiden Torres as a part of the discussion. So now that we've caught up with uh, head coach Steve Cook, how did we get full points with Atlanta United 2? Here's the highlights. Into the 11th minute. Turnover. Atlanta with an opportunity to break. Firmino turns. Has Brennan out wide to the right. Brennan cuts it back to the left of Firmino. Firmino, top of the 18. Right-footed shot. Big save by Dowd. Corner Atlanta. Firmino opened up his hips and wanted to put that into the upper 90 on the right side. Inside of the right foot with the shot, and Dowd was able to push it wide. Corner Atlanta, Wolf will come across to take it. Here comes Hunt City. Bolaños into the middle to Pasillas. Pasillas can't control it. Good defending from Efrain Morales. Handball shout saying it came off of Chong Kui. Referee says no. Firmino will turn into the attacking half. Bidness is picked up here in Huntsville. Lots of pushing, lots of shoving. Whistle blown. Armas tried to go near side. It's blocked. Firmino finds the rebound. Save Dowd. I don't know if Dowd saw that one coming, but he got his hands up to block it. Armas did the math and thought he could beat the wall to the near side and nearly did, but the deflection fell to Firmino. And Dowd got his hands up. And blocked the shot to his right to Morales. Up the right side to Edwards. Edwards over the top for Firmino. Skips away from him. He finds the second ball. Firmino, top of the 18. Firmino wide of the near post. Dropped the shoulder and cut back to the right foot. Again going for that upper 90 and just wide of it. Able to split two to find Firmino. He turns quickly. Right-footed shot over the bar. Quick shot by Firmino from 25 yards out. Fizzed it over the crossbar. Did not see any indication of first half stoppage time. And the reason why is there won't be any. That'll do it for the first 45. No score. Atlanta United 2 with a very good half, but nothing to show for it on the road in Alabama. Tyler Wolf with the assist in his Atlanta United 2 debut in 2024. Rodrigo Neri with the goal, his first in Atlanta. And Dominic Chong Kui makes it all happen with a brilliant take out of the air with the left foot to settle it to Tyler Wolf. 1 0 Atlanta. You see the quality of Rodrigo Neri. Pure goal scoring instincts. Driving across to the top of the six and slamming it home past Dowd. Brought down, and here comes Atlanta. Tyler Wolf, Matt Edwards. Cross top of the six, headed home. Goal, goal, goal. Rodrigo Neri is on fire to start the second half. It's quite a challenge for Chong Kui tonight. Matched up with Bolaños quite a bit. It's been a give-or-take kind of battle. Bolaños, as you would expect, has gotten the better of the 16-year-old a few times. But Sean Kui has held his own against one of the most talented players in MLS Next Pro. So 2-1 win for Atlanta United 2, Matty. And, uh, yeah, it was one where there were a lot of lessons to be learned when it comes to finishing a match out, having younger players do that. It was a learning experience on a bunch of different levels tonight. Absolutely. You know, you come in the first half, you were dominant in the first half weren't able to capitalize on those shots. Then you come into the second half on fire, and in the, not even in the first, what, minute, two minutes, three minutes? 
you have Neri finding it in the back of the net, and that's exactly what you want to start out of a half, and then finding the next one only a couple minutes later, getting his first brace with Atlanta United too. That's huge. That gives you that momentum. You know, you deal with some chaos, especially with the PK as well, which also, too, credit to Ollie Wright, a rocket, absolutely a rocket into the back of the net. But they get the PK. It's now 2-1. You have to finish out the match with possibly Hunsell breaking down the door for an equalizer, and you're able to do it. And it's exactly... It's exactly the performance you want to see from Atlanta United, too. Goal at 46.07 for Rodrigo Neri, the assist to Tyler Wolf At 49.19, he got his brace. So three minutes and 12 seconds, according to our friends at Opta, Rodrigo Neri gets his brace for Atlanta United, two on the night, the assist to Matt Edwards. Here's our conversation with the man who had the brace. Your first goal with Atlanta, and then you earned your first brace with Atlanta. What, what are you feeling right now? Very happy. Happy for the team. We needed that win. Just... Excited for what's coming. I'm very proud of the team and myself, too. Um, Coach Cook said that in the first half, you were really, like, pushing back. You were really dropping back a lot more in the second half. He wanted you to branch out and get forward as well. What was that process like, kind of switching from that first half and finding those spaces to then go forward in the second? I mean, Coach told me to push more forward. Also said to find the ball on the first goal. Thankfully, we, we listened to Coach. He said to cross the ball on the ground because he thought it was going to be there where we got the goal. We listened. First cross, first goal. So, wise man. <laughs> and coming into this week, you know, you're playing with the players that you know well from the twos in training. You come into this match, you're playing with two players you haven't really seen playing with and Tyler Wolf and Luke Brennan. What were those conversations like and how do you adapt so quickly when you are playing with two different players you haven't played with? I mean, they're amazing players, so... That's a privilege because the connection, I think, is just automatically there because they're brilliant at what they do. Uh, it's just easy to play with those guys. How much of a rush is it to play in front of a, a crowd like this that is kind of getting after you guys a little bit? I mean, I want to be hum humble about it, but I don't really pay attention to it. It doesn't phase me. I don't really hear them. So. Does it boost you at all? No, nah, I just think... I'm focused on my game too much, and I just want to, in this case, charge them down and show them that Atlanta is on top. So don't really listen to them until I score, and then it gets real quiet. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I like that. Um, talk a little bit about the second goal. You know, the first one, it's great from Chonkui to lay it off to Tyler, puts it low. But the second one kind of walked me through how you saw that one building up and how you wanted to get to the spot that you got to. I mean, it was a great build-up to the play. Um, I think it was Noble that played a long ball, and it was between uh, Luke and Matt that they played on the wing. I saw Matt like kind of miss a bit the ball and go a bit further to the line, and I just screamed at him, second post. He crossed it. I was there. So, great cross. It's been really quick that you've found things like that, the little bits of chemistry with guys that you haven't trained with very much. Is it just kind of coming together really well that you guys are on the same wavelength? I mean, I just think it's small conversations outside the field that make that chemistry. Just little telling them, like, when the drill after, after training is over, just telling them, oh, I'll be open, I'll make this run. Or if you're getting closer to line, I'll make that run. And it's in those small conversations where you get that chemistry and that teamwork. So a brace for Rodrigo Neri on the night. And uh, it looks like the twos have found themselves a goal scorer, Maddie. I think they have. They have. It's so interesting. You have, you have a player like Rodrigo Neri who can come in and just be that striker up top. You have Kareem Tamimi, who is a phenomenal striker, and he – he does a great job. He's up top. He floats around. He's able to drop back and defend. But to have someone who is solely your striker and to be up top and stationed there and ready to go, it's so fun. It's so fun to have him. It's exciting for him to break out in a performance just like that. And, and I love how he said that he focuses on himself. It was a fantastic crowd here tonight, north of 4,000 folks in Huntsville. Mm -hmm. But Rodrigo Neri, uh, was it for love of the game, where Kevin Costner said basically release the mechanism and he just tunes everything out? That's what we're getting out of Rodrigo Neri here. He just tunes everything out and focuses on what's there in front of him. You have players who use the crowd to fuel you up. You know, Nick Firmino, it's yes. Nick Firmino. I mean, we, we said it at halftime. He <laughs> came out absolutely on fire and Jason said it in the call, you know, the Hunt, the Huntsvillians, all the fans, they got 
They were they were booing. They were you know booing every time he got the ball, but it just kept rowling Firmino up and. He just kept having more of those chances and was on fire and trying to find those opportunities. And that's what players feel off of. And then you have a player like Neri who just kind of tunes it out and just focus on who, what he needs to do for the team and his own game. And we saw that performance. Switching from offense to defense, we caught up with Caden Moore, the man who got to sign his name on the line, which is dotted earlier in the week. A big moment in the, in the uh, career of Caden Moore. Five of six on the day when it came to his duels. Total duels, duels won five of six, won three of four in the air. Big uh, part of uh, Caden Moore on the day winning all of those duels. Here's our conversation with Caden Moore, newly under contract on a different stage of his life for Atlanta United, too. All righty, first of all, you played 90 minutes tonight in a crowd like this. What were your emotions? How was the crowd energy really affecting you guys on the pitch? Um, it was a high, high energy environment, like you said, a lot of fans here. Um, teammates kept me calm playing with Ephra in the back just an experienced player kept me calm there but it was good um, that momentum shift when they scored just staying locked in and winning the game holding the game out was was good you have a great connection with um, Sean Kui on that side and finding that chemistry how has it been really getting to explore a little bit more of that connection you guys are on the pitch with the Pooze yeah it's, it's really cool seeing us go from academy to playing professional together I've known Dom for a long time and and just knowing how each other play and playing together has been really good. It's just really cool to watch him, how he's performing, and how we're performing together. Getting your professional deal, what was that call for you like? And just getting that and getting that extra boost of like momentum and energy when you come into a place like this and continuing to play out with the twos. It was huge. Um, it's been a long time coming. Uh, I was told about it a while ago, but it's been a long process. But just knowing that the club believes in me is just huge for me. So it just gives me more confidence to play, knowing that they trust in me with, no matter how it goes. So it's been good. You have Ephra on that side, but you were also able to keep a lot of composure. It almost at times seems like you, when people say that you are 16, you don't realize it when you play on the pitch. So how do you keep that composure for you and trying to find that identity for yourself as a defender and as a player? Um, I just, the coaches, the situations they put us in in training makes the games easy. So in the games, it's just like I'm replicating what we do in training every day. So it's no, it's nothing different. So it just makes those moments easy. The coaches make it very easy. Tell me a little bit about how this calendar year has been for you. Yeah. I mean, I remember preseason game one for the first team yeah. in Birmingham. You're getting minutes there. Yeah. You get time with the academy. But you've been playing consistently with the twos now, and now you're a full professional. Just what has the ride been like in 2024? It's been it's been overwhelming, to be honest. Um, so much transition from playing academy, going to GA Cup, just different tournaments. Not much rest, but it's been good. There's other center backs like Noah. I've talked to Noah and Ephra, and they've just – They've been through it before. Yeah. So they just talked me through it, and it's been it's been good. How helpful is it to have two guys like that yeah. that you can lean on, and Matt as well, who had a little bit different experience that you can lean on as guys to look up to? Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. They um they've been through almost the exact same things I've been through, the ups and the downs. They tell me all the time what they've been through is almost the same exact thing. So just knowing how they turned out and and just seeing a light at the end of the tunnel has been really good. The coaching staff and the academy staff that, that's helped prepare you is there something that you know, when you get into moments like this that you think of, whether it's something one of your academy coaches said or, or Matt Lowry or anybody that you've worked with at the club, is there like a, a mantra or a motto that's kind of stuck with you? Um, just being consistent every day, just finding, uh, just finding a balance every day. It's, it gets overwhelming. So just finding a balance in everything that I do and just be ready for the roller coaster. I know there's a lot of ups and downs to come, but just be ready for it. I know they're coming. Excellent. Four 16-year-olds out there to finish things out. What was it like with three other guys that share the same birth year as, yeah. <laughs> birth year as you out there to wrap this one up? That was really cool. Just um, like we said, we play academy together. So just getting to see that happen on a pro field in a pro environment is just awesome to see. Just standing back there watching us is awesome. It's awesome. Well, and at the same time, you got to have a, a learned lesson about closing a match out with all yeah. the chaos and everything yeah. going on around you. I know, yeah, that's been a problem for us before, closing games out with the twos, even Academy. We've had some games where we're supposed to win, but that was a really good one. Closing that one out was really good in front of all these fans. It was good. So Caden Moore, once again, 95 in the program and played his heart out tonight. Play, absolutely. I mean, he was one of the two 16-year-olds that finished out the entire match, played the full 90. He's a lot of fun to watch. I mean, I said it in us talking to him he doesn't play like he's 16 years old. You hear, I didn't even realize it until Jason had said it. I was sitting up here. He said, you can't believe he's 16 years old because of the way he's able to compose himself on the field and what he's been able to do. 
it's so much fun to watch, and he's he's earned it. He has earned every minute of it. He's earned this professional contract, and all credit is due to the coaches, to the academy coaches, to the staff at Atlanta United for what they've been able to do with the academy program and building it up the way they have. So a 2-1 win for Atlanta United, too. Any other thoughts in your brain before we get out of here? Oh, it's always fun coming to Huntsville. I really because do love it's it. Chaos. It's so fun. But even too, you get performances like that. I think we said the same thing. You know, the last time we were here was me and Jason making the road trip from Nashville down to then Huntsville. Yeah, yeah. And it was an, again a great dominant performance from the twos. It was a great performance. It set them off for a really good run. They had a a little bit of a stretch where they weren't doing as well as they wanted to. But I feel like it's always when you come to Huntsville, you get this sort of momentum you get to come out on top a little bit and you get to move on and use that energy towards the next game but also too i mean it's just fun competition you know you have some players on huntsville who are absolutely phenomenal i mean we had the chance to talk to ollie Wright before mm-hmm. the season in the blast off battle he's such a fun player he's a crowd favorite as soon as he stepped foot onto the pitch i mean this whole stadium was roaring accurate and i mean he's so much fun to watch where he's able to make an impact it's just it's a fun atmosphere. It's a fun crowd. It's fun team. It's just, it's so much fun. And I, I, I love it. It's always fun coming here. Great environment up here in Huntsville. And Atlanta United, too, has won. And the, the road team has won every single match in this derby. And I, we got to figure out a name for this derby, by the way. We do have to come up with a name, but that also brings up a good point. Yeah. They will be playing Huntsville again at Fifth Third Stadium. Okay. The last time they played there, it was last season. It was a 4-2 loss. Huntsville came out on top. So it'll be interesting to see how the tables turn, especially now. We'll see how that can kind of come into play. If Huntsville will have more success on the road, just like Atlanta's had success on the road here. I'm interested to see how that one's going to play out. 9-15 on the calendar. So September 15th at 5th 3rd, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. That's when uh, the next go-round with these two happens with Atlanta United 2 and Huntsville City Football Club. So it was uh, it was a fun night here at Joe Davis. Thanks to uh, all of our hosts here in, in Huntsville all across the board, administration, ownership, uh, communications, to make uh, our experience as fantastic as it always is when we get to come up here. It's great to catch up with all of our friends up here, and it's uh, even better when Atlanta United 2 gets out with a 2-1 win. So for Sophia, for Jason, who's been watching the whole time, For Maddie and for me, I'm just John. Thanks for dropping by. That's your twos review for the 2-1 win. Atlanta United 2 wins in Huntsville against Huntsville City Football Club. Play it safe, everybody. Enjoy the games involving Atlanta United 2.